<laughs> Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 44 and we are here live, live, live meeting with you guys to talk about some really important stuff today. What I'm going to need you to do is go ahead and pour yourself a nice strong cup of black coffee. And let's see, do we have anybody out there today? Looks like we've got Bert. Hello, Bert, Visionary Robotics, used to be Ohio Tech Team. Welcome. Asha, we've got Carlo, we've got, uh, looks like we've got David, uh, Braham. Okay, we've got some people coming in. Bob Owen, hello. All right, Peter from Sweden. Man, we've got a worldwide audience here. Bert, glass of water, really? glass of water come on man get yourself some coffee hey Richard good to have you B27 from India okay always great to have our friends from India tuning in I understand it's probably a little late for you guys but you stay up for the program Ireland uh, <clears throat> modeling factory okay we got a we got a nice group of people uh, Mike see hot coffee here in Michigan I bet I'll tell you, have you guys been watching the news, right? I'm here in West Texas. Have you been watching the news about what has happened to Texas last week? Man, we got hit with a storm. Like, it has been, for the last week, it has been zero degrees Fahrenheit or like 18 degrees below zero centigrade. And a lot of you guys, like our friends up in Michigan, you say, ah, that ain't nothing. Guys, it's not... The, the devastation that happens is not a function of how cold it gets. The devastation is a function of how much colder it gets than what the infrastructure is ready for. So in Texas, kind of like what normal weather in Texas would be, you know, a couple of nights down in the teens, uh, very unusual for us to get to single digit, and you don't have these extended, uh, these extended uh, cold spells. Well, what happened in Texas? We just got hit. We got hit. Hey, Philippe, how are you doing? Hey, Philippe, are you in the Dallas-Fort Worth area? do I remember that right are you in the Dallas Fort Worth area we're kind of talking about the we're talking about the weather here in Texas that we've had in the in the last week and okay da, uh, Philippe did man the whole thing kind of got kicked off this whole apocalypse kind of got kicked off with that wreck that happened there in Dallas it was just like the road was slick 133 car pile up and now with modern technology there were people that were stopped and they just had their cell phones going and they were just showing that horrible crash it was just like one truck another truck just cars ramming into each other and it seemed like the wreck went on for 30 or 45 minutes 133 cars six people guess uh killed uh, let's see richard was saying yeah he saw it uh had few uh okay Let's see, uh, Philippe is saying that he got the snowstorm. Yeah, Philippe, you know that I'm in West Texas, so I got it. Uh, Bob is from England. Uh, Philippe had a few uh, pipes burst, all right. Uh, let's see if anybody else is in Texas that got into this uh, this weather. Okay, uh, Bosco says that he saw some of the videos of the crash. Man, that was really terrible, and that kind of kicked it off. And the weather wasn't that bad at that point. It's just in Texas, we don't have the snow plows, and we don't have the infrastructure to deal with slick roads. And so people went out and hit those slick roads, and, man, there was just no stop, and it was just... A, one after another plowing into things and so it was really terrible then the weather got really bad and again you know a lot of people have colder weather than what we had it's just we don't have the infrastructure to deal with that cold weather and kind of what you saw is everything there was just sort of like a complete systemic failure here and so like if you don't have uh, if the electricity goes down hard then you don't have water and if you don't have water and electricity then you can't pump gas and if you can't pump gas then the trucks can't go out on the road and so it's like within 24 hours of this storm hitting the grocery stores were completely empty 
the roads were frozen solid, the pipes were burst, the electricity was off. And so, oh man, hey, uh, Makria, thank you, a super chat there, really appreciate that. Uh, oh yeah, I, rec I recognize your, your picture there, Makria, and uh, uh, taking the Jetson Nano series. Yes, I've been enjoying your comments, following you in your uh, path through those lessons. And so that is really, uh, that is really great. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about Python in a minute, give me a chance to, tell you my snow apocalypse story here. So basically a lot of the people around me have been without water and without electricity and sub-zero temperatures for the last seven days. And can you imagine even little things like if you don't have water, you can't flush your toilet. Can you imagine being in a family of four inside without having water for a week? And so people have really, really been in a terrible, uh, terrible situation here. We were blessed, my family was blessed in that first of all, you know, I'm a kind of a guy that likes to stay prepared. And so we have a very deep pan in our home so we always have a very deep pantry so it wasn't an issue with uh, with running out of food and luckily for most of the week our electricity stayed on so we didn't end up one of those houses with no electricity and no water uh, but the electricity was out for a few days so we actually were down to the point of cooking our food over a fire so we have a fireplace we started a nice fire and we were cooking in the fireplace and so it was really oh man look at that b27 thank you thank you for the super chat really appreciate you guys helping out with the super chat you know how i love my coffee and if there's one thing i need right now is i need hot coffee so you guys helping out you're keeping me in hot coffee so anyway i didn't mean to digress so much on this thing but this is like the worst storm in texas that we've had in my lifetime and texas was just not prepared for it so a lot of people had no power let's see at least now we know we really need to fix the texas a fix in texas with the power grid yeah and a lot of this believe it or not was the result of green energy and the thing is like texas has these wind turbines all over and we get a lot of our electricity from wind turbines and what the law the way the law is here the power companies you have to buy first from the wind companies and then if the wind companies can't provide you enough power then you load the level you load level using the natural gas plants well that makes the natural gas plants what redheaded stepchildren is what it makes them it makes them redheaded stepchildren and so really it's very hard uh, the natural gas generation becomes a very low uh, margin business or a non-profitable business and because they never know what they're going to produce only what's needed and so they didn't have the money to go in and really winterize their uh, their natural gas plants so when the weather got cold the green energy shuts down they have to stop the wind turbines and there's no solar so then the whole load gets pushed back on the natural gas generating uh, facilities and they've been operating at so, such low margins they weren't maintained and they weren't winterized and they couldn't come online and so it's kind of like because the green energy got the priority then your core natural gas generation wasn't there and things kind of really went down hard so basically the bottom line is green energy was one of the things that really led to the sort of catastrophe we had here in uh, in west texas last uh last week but the good news is let me check the temperature right now it is warming up today i think that we have the worst behind us like right now it is 27 degrees uh 27 degrees fahrenheit philippe man and wayne swan man you guys this is crazy, Philippe. You're going to have to stop doing this. Your wife is going to get the credit card bill, and you're going to be in trouble if you keep doing this. Okay, Philippe says he's excited about the new Python series. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a minute here. And thank you. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, hey, building a two-axis solar tracker. That is really great. And then we've got Wayne. Wayne, I've been enjoying all your comments on the channel. I do read your comments, and uh, and that's great. Uh, 
oh okay you were on jetson nano lesson five yeah those jetson nano lessons are really uh, really great there so anyway it's warming up like right now 27 degrees uh, fahrenheit is a few degrees below freezing and so that's manageable it's actually my wife ventured out today to try to go to the grocery store you know what happened there's people in the grocery store shopping and then the power goes down the electricity goes down well if the electricity goes down the cash registers don't work and they can't process your order so you know what they did they just said free food you know the the the, the grocery store stopped actually even charging you could just walk out with your groceries and so they just let you take them and, you know until like <laughs> they ran out of groceries and you know within an hour every grocery store within you know three four hundred miles of here was completely out of food so it was uh it was quite cr quite crazy uh oh philippe is not married at <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's like uh that's like a uncle of mine told me at one point he says uh he was giving me advice he says buy all the power tools and shop equipment you want before you get married because once you get married those are going to be <laughs> those are going to be negotiated items and so that was very good uh that was very good uh advice that he uh, gave me but Philippe always appreciates you guys and appreciates you guys helping me out I mean it really is uh it really is an, an encouragement for me but I've talked a lot about the storm but I really didn't think that we were going to be able to have a live chat today because uh you know actually even yesterday when I came in trying to get ready for this the power went off four times yesterday and so if I disappear from your screen understand that we're that it's a power outage and if I disappear I probably won't be coming back because the other thing that happens is when power goes down then the network goes down and where I am here in the office the network doesn't just come back up so if you lose me I'm probably gonna be out until uh, out until next week uh, Oh, okay, Philippe, you have a dog. Dogs are very faithful, right? I love dogs. As you probably know, I don't care for cats very much, but I do indeed love dogs. You guys are tired of me talking about the weather, but hey, you know, like I say, I am just barely here today because yesterday the internet was out most of the day and the power was on and off all day. Hey, I have some other news for you. I have some other news. Okay, I'm gonna have to show you my news. Can anybody guess what my news is besides the Python series? One more personal thing and then we'll get on to Python. I am this week a new grandpa. Look at that, look at that. I am a new grandpa and that little boy. So I have a daughter, all right, and my daughter is married, of course, and now she just had a grand, or she had a baby, which makes it my grandbaby. Okay, and guess what? You know, I, uh, you know, I'm Paul McCorder, as you know, and we only had a daughter. Okay, well, I shouldn't say only had a daughter. We had a daughter, but we didn't have a son we just had one child it was a daughter and just the way our family has been kind of like I'm the last of the McCorders okay and I had a daughter and so what my son-in-law and my daughter decided to do is they decided to give the baby my last name instead of their family name you know my daughter's husband her husband insisted that the baby be named after our family so that our family name could continue what a champion huh what a wonderful son-in-law can you say like is there like a son-in-law of the year award a son-in-law of the year award it would go to my son-in-law but uh this is little i'll give you the name now this is little micah paul mccorder so they not only gave him my last name they gave him my first name as his middle name now the reason they uh the reason they did that is they just thought well that way if they wanted to like if it was like paul 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 get confused who's who they gave him a, they gave him micah so he can be micah or he can be paul and so that is the brand spanking new little chunk of humanity that has come into our lives there so we are very happy about that all right guys you guys are tired of me pontificating here about my personal life okay but we'll we'll jump in and start talking about what we have coming up now and what we have coming up now is I am releasing now starting this coming Wednesday 
you will be getting episode one of our new Python series. Okay, now why am I doing Python? Uh, let's see, one reason that I'm doing Python is a lot of you guys have asked for Python, and so that's just what I decided our next educational series is going to be on Python. Plus, a lot of you guys are kind of coming to the end of those Arduino series. I hear that some of you guys have been binge watching those things in the quarantine and the lockdown, and so as you're getting up into the 50s and 60s, you see the incoming lesson 50 to 60s in that Arduino ser series, you're seeing that those are coming to an end, right? And so you're saying, what am I going to do next? Well, you can just move right on into those Python. You can move right on into those Python lessons, and the first one will be released next week. Now, I told you that I was going to release them in March, all right, but I got a little bit more done done than what I thought. I hate to I hate to take advantage of disaster, but we sort of had a shutdown because of the COVID business. And then after that shutdown, then we had the bad weather. So there's just been this period of time I've had that I could focus on making videos. And so I got quite a few of them done. And so basically, guys, I have a year's worth of instructional material put together for you guys for, uh, for Python. And the way it's going to go is it's going to start out with basic Python. And, and, okay, let me back up. Another reason that I did Python is as I looked at the edu educational material that is available in Python, it's kind of like two different choices. One is they give you the simple introductory stuff like, okay, here's how you do Python, but never get into the advanced programming techniques. Okay, so you just learn a little bit and can kind of do some simple stuff. Or on the other hand, they jump into this crazy hard stuff that you're not ready for. And so so what I saw that was missing was a methodical structured approach that starts with the basics and takes you all the way to the really, really advanced stuff and nice little bite-sized chunks. The other thing that I've done on this lesson this series is I see what you guys seem to really enjoy believe it or not it seems like people really like the homework like everybody hates homework in high school but now as you're kind of more mature you really realize that you learn by getting homework and so one of the things that I do in just about every one of these lessons just about every one of these lessons what I do is I teach you something and then I give you homework and then in the next lesson, I show you the solution to the homework, and then I give you a little more, and then homework. So, so every lesson, I'm going to be showing you the solution from the last week's homework, and then I'm going to teach you something new, and then I'll give you homework for the next week. And guys, this is the thing with programming. If you just watch me do it, it looks easy because when you see me do it, you understand what I'm doing and therefore you think it's easy and therefore you think you understand it. But it's a big difference between you understanding what I'm doing as you're watching me versus versus you doing it without me being there. And when you struggle and fight and toil with this homework, that is where the real learning happens. And then if you just get absolutely hung and can't do it at all, that's okay. You've learned and you've struggled and then you can see. And then when you see me do it, it's like, aha, now I understand. I understand how I should be thinking. Let's see, I'm not keeping up with all the questions, Dan. What supplies should you have? Dan, you're not going to have to buy anything. You're really not going to have to buy anything. You need a PC that you can, like a, a Windows-based PC. You can also do Python on Linux. And so if you have a Linux system, if you have a PC, that's all you're going to need. You Mac guys, you can follow along too, but you're going to have to figure that. I'm sure there'll be a button for the installation for Mac as well, okay? But I'm just kind of doing it on the PC, and it should work on the, uh, on the other systems. Uh, so, uh, okay, man, you guys are asking questions. IDE, we will be using Visual Studio Code. I'll have a lesson on how to install it, how to configure it. I'll have all that stuff for you guys. Okay, so you're going to have homework every week. 
and then I have like a year's worth of lessons that are already prepared. And what it's gonna start with is, it's gonna start with the basics of Python. I'm sorry, if you already know Python, then you can just sort of brush up and review it or look, look at it and just do the homework or something or just wait till it gets more advanced. But I don't wanna leave any man behind. We do not leave any men behind or any women. Okay, hey guys, it actually seems like we're getting more women to actually watch this channel and do this stuff. Let me know, guys, I'm looking at the comment. Do we have any ladies out there today? Did any ladies tune in? If you are a lady, let us know because we really would love to have more ladies take this because women are really much more oriented towards, uh, oh, wow, super chat from Klaus. Klaus. Thanks. He says, thanks for the Arduino lessons. The homework made me learn a lot. Well, get ready, Klaus, because you got a lot of homework coming. You got a whole lot more homework coming. Okay, let's see. Hey, Fetch Foolden is a woman. Okay, Jamuna is a woman. Okay, so we've got two uh, ladies. Welcome. Welcome. We'll ring the bell for the ladies, okay, because I think that the world of engineering would be well served to have more women because I think your skills would really, really be very effective. And so we love that. Jamuna, okay, welcome. Uh, let's see, any more? Uh, do we have uh, Jamuna and Fetchfulden? Do we have any other ladies out there? Okay. No more ladies. All right. Well, we got two, so that's uh, so that's good. Always want to give a always want to give a shout out to the uh, give a shout out to the ladies. Uh, my, I have a granddaughter as well that's four, and she's already learning to program. Man, she gets her little Raspberry Pi out and she goes to town on it. So you cannot start people out too early. Uh, you cannot start people out too early programming, and I think my granddaughter is going to be very adept at programming, but maybe I am just the proud grandpa. Hey, got somebody from Nova Scotia, Canada, Su uh, Suzanne. Okay, I'm going to hazard a guess that you are a lady Suzanne or you're some guy using Suzanne's <laughs> YouTube account. Okay, uh, Code Cage, where you been, man? You're late. All right, welcome. Okay, uh, let's see, I do support, yeah, I'll tell you, I think I think a lot of times, you know, like, it, again, I always get in trouble with what I say, men and women are not equivalent, but I think men and women complement each other really, really well. And I think that women can bring a lot to the job force that sometimes is missing with men. And so I think women and men working together make a stronger team than just women or just men. But that's just my two cents. Oh, wow. Frederico, you just bought me a coffee, man. Thank you. He says, thank you, sir, for the lessons and tips on Arduino waiting for Python. Okay, Frederico, get ready because you're going to have a lot of homework. You will have a lot of homework. Okay, yeah, people are seeing diversity is better. All right, Philippe sees that. Okay, yeah, and so I'm just putting my two cents in. And guys, you know, like understand like I'm kind of an old guy, but you know what? My mom is still alive and she is kicking. I mean, she was out gathering firewood in sub zero temperatures. I say, Where's mom? I look outside. She is in the yard in snow this deep and she is gathering firewood to bring it in the house. So I have a mom. Okay. Jose, man. Thanks for the cup of coffee. Thank you for your dedication. One of your fans from Portugal. All right, man, you guys are so generous with these super chats. Really, uh, really appreciate that. But okay, so I have a mom. My mom is still alive, okay. I have a wife, my dear sweet wife, who has been my wife for going on 35 years now. I have a daughter, I have one child, a daughter. And I got a granddaughter. So you see, I got like a mom, I got a wife, I got a daughter, I got a granddaughter. It's sort of like the most important people in my wife, in my life are women. So I hold women in very, very high regard, right? I have just this incredible awe and respect for women. And the thing is, is that I would like to see more women getting, oh my goodness, TM bought me a coffee. Thank you, sir. He says, my college told me to build, uh, not to build my capstone because of COVID project, but I taught myself. He taught himself and made a wooden vending machine running an Arduino. <laughs> hey, wow. 
that is really great. I love hearing these stories where you guys are benefiting from these lessons. <clears throat> but the women in my life are very important to me. I hold them in high regard. I want to see more women go into engineering. And I do sort of hope that my granddaughter, she's showing a lot of adeptness in this area. I really hope she goes into it because even though she's four years old, I think she's got what it takes call me crazy i think she's got what it takes and so we're trying to continue to encourage her to go into uh to go into engineering so let's get back to these <clears throat> python lessons we're going to start with the basics and so there are going to be four or five lessons there may be some of you old timers you old pros are going to be bored with but then what we're going to really go into is it's like i kind of learned python but then when I looked at a Python program that a real programmer wrote, it was all of this init underscore underscore init self dot this. It's just like it was like I was reading a foreign language and I couldn't understand what all this init business was and what all of this self business was. And it was like I was reading a foreign language. It was like I was reading a foreign language. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the basics, but then I'm going to really teach you. And it makes sense. Once you have someone explain it, it makes sense. But what I'm going to teach you is I'm going to teach you, first of all, about functions. And you probably are kind of already cons you know, understand functions. But then you're going to learn classes. And classes, it's, it's like object-oriented programming where you create these objects and then you interact with those objects. And then the thing is like, what's a method? Well, a method is the same thing as a function, only a method is a function that is inside of a class. So I'm going to teach you about functions. And then I'm going to teach you about classes. And then I'm going to teach you about methods. And then all of a sudden, you're going to have really, really powerful tools to take your programming and take your coding to that next level. OK, then after that, what we are going to do is we are going to uh, what we are going to do. Let's see Fetch is saying. Uh, I was about to learn Python. And wow, I was surprised to know that you're OK fetch don't you be wandering off to somebody else's lesson you watch these lessons right i'm telling you these are going to be great lessons these are going to be very very great lessons so you're going to learn python then what you're going to learn is you're going to and there's going to be a logic behind what i'm doing i'll get to it just hang with me and hey opal welcome opal it's always great to see you hey sb sb sue hobjik bose I'm going to need a tardy slip from you. You're very late. I'm very disappointed you're late. OK, so there's a logic behind what I'm doing. So first of all, you're going to learn Python. Then you're going to learn Visual Python, which allows you to do 3D graphics and 3D simulations and 3D animations. Let me do you guys want to see just like kind of a quick little sample of one of the things I'm working on, kind of like getting to the Visual Py Python? Adi, you're late too. Get a tardy slip. You guys, I'm going to start shutting you off if you don't get here on time, OK? OK, Adi wants a, uh, a, a Adi, A-A-D-I, you got your shout out, OK? IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. It's the editor you'd use to write the programs. OK, you want to sample, OK, Subhojit and Philippe say yes. All right, let me see if I can hop down here. Let me see if I can find a good screen. I have so many. Uh, my studio has grown so complex. I'm not finding what I need here. Let's see. Let's see if this one takes me. OK, now you're actually seeing my studio. But I will cover that up. And here's a Python. Here's my Python program. And you see, it's pretty simple. You see some imports, and you just see some equals and some simple equations. But let me show you what this does, if I can. Let's see if this will work. OK, boom. You see, I made a clock. And the clock actually displays the right time. And then if you look, you can see that it's three-dimensional. You see how it's a three-dimensional clock, and you can drive it around. And it's actually showing you 
what time it is. Like right now where I am, it is 1129. So you can see that it is showing you the time. Now, why would I, uh, why would I want to do a clock? Well, just because it's animated, it's not just a three-dimensional picture, it's animated, it's alive, it's reflecting something that is going on in the real world. So where this is going and what I am thinking is, what I'm actually thinking, thinking is I'm thinking we're going to learn Python then we're going to learn visual Python how to do these animated come to life 3D visuals and then what we're going to do is we are going to connect that to our old friend Mr. Arduino and so all the things that we learned in those 68 lessons on Arduino, that data is going to go from the Arduino over into Visual Python, and then your graphics come alive based on what your Arduino is doing. So if you're measuring temperature over here on Visual Python, you would have a 3D graphic of a thermometer, and it would be changing as the temperature changed, or you would have a dial and that dial would show barometric pressure or you would have a live graphic that would be animated based on a distance sensor. So what you're doing is you're able to do a live 3D visuals that what they're doing reflects what's happening in the real world. So the real world is the Arduino it sends the data and then your virtual world is updating based on what's happening in the real world. Does that make sense? You guys tell me, does it make sense where we're going with this? Okay, does it make sense where we're going with this? I'll have a sip of coffee while I wait for you guys to answer. Are you planning any NumPy or SciPy lessons? Uh, right now, NumPy I will be teaching as we go along like when I need something in NumPy we'll use NumPy and I'll show you I am really considering like you could imagine 10 quick lessons on NumPy would be pretty worthwhile I haven't done those yet also matplotlib is a graphics package that does graphing and charting of data and so matplotlib and numpy are things that I think I would like to do okay uh, let's see got some more questions uh, that is great can you do it on the Jetson Nano okay I know that you can run Python on the Jetson Nano what I'm not sure is I'm not sure if visual Python runs on the Jetson Nano I have not tried that yet so I am not sure about that can you set up a heat profile in visual Python that controls the Arduino all right so this is something that you can also do so you can get data from Arduino up to visual Python that then updates your graphics and one of the things we did like for the space program where we send instrument packages to the edge of space we had a visual in visual Python that had things like downrange velocity like dials it looked like a jet fighter cockpit where you had like downrange velocity you had altitude you had temperature you had pressure you had all this data probably 20 channels of data coming into this console and all these dials and charts and everything in visual Python were updating throughout our uh, throughout our space flight so I thought that was pretty cool and so that's kind of what motivated me to uh, that's what sort of motivated me to do this so we will go then all the way to the point that we are sending data from Arduino into Visual Python and then Visual Python doing live animations and so forth the other thing you can do okay I've got distracted the other thing you can do in Visual Python you can have slider bars and so you can then change things in visual python and then that data can go down into the arduino and then that will you know the visual python can control the arduino and the arduino can report to visual python and the other neat thing about this is is that you're learning something that's really cool which is you start getting into things like client server relationships and that's kind of like a computer science concept but you're doing it for a real reason and so you got to decide between the arduino and the Python who's the client and who's the server and then you start setting up these different algorithms for client server relationships so you're having a lot of fun but you're also learning some pretty important computer science uh, uh, computer science uh, uh, techniques there all right what I will have to say is 
a lot of you guys were really, really hard on me last week. I made a lot of people mad last week. Well, what did I do? Okay, I made a year's worth of videos, and then I uploaded them yesterday, and then I premiered them one a week starting Wednesday. So this is like Saturday, that's like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You're four days away from the first video. Okay, in four days, you're gonna get your first Python video. But people were really, really mad at me because when I load the whole year, one of them is going to premiere, you know, like eight months from now. And you guys just had a little hissy fit. You threw a little temper tantrum because I posted a video that wasn't going to be released for eight months. It's like what you wanted was you wanted me to just come in in one day and release a year's worth of videos. Like, why are you making me wait for that? Well, do you want me to release a year's worth of videos in one day and then you don't hear from me for another year? Because remember, I'm in the process of moving. Okay, I've sold my house. I've sold most of my stuff. And I'm in the process of moving to Africa. And so I've got to get over there. And then once I get over there, I have to set my studio up. And then once I set my studio up, I have to get a good internet connection so there could be a period of time where I'm gonna be dark now almost anywhere where I'll be able to do is I'll be able to get on the chat with you okay I'll be able to get on the chat with you uh, in the uh, what would we call it the you know the premiere I can chat with you during the premiere and then maybe I can get to the point I could do a live stream with a webcam right but do you want me to really just completely disappear for a period of time when I'm actually in the midst of the move and trying to get my studio to show up over there right that doesn't make sense so I've got a year's worth of videos made then I will initiate my move and you know what would be great is if I get over there and I get my studio set up, okay, I get my studio set up, and then I could start making more videos. Maybe at that point, I could start releasing the videos a couple of weeks or something like that, and you'll start hearing a lot uh, from me. But because our audience is continuing to grow and we're continuing to get new subscribers and we're continuing to get more interactions, I don't want to just go dark on you for six months if I have trouble getting internet or getting uh, all my studio gear over there okay does that make sense I'm looking for some feedback now yeah I'm moving like basically I'm building I got everything sold I'm building a little barn here with a little apartment in it so if I ever need to come back and visit I'll have a place to stay and that kind of project is going slowly but as soon as that done I'm out of here all right so yes I will move okay so let's see Ruben says it makes sense agreed thank you okay Philippe all right it makes sense what I'm doing okay uh, yeah Starlink I just got for where I live here in Texas I just got an announcement that I could go ahead and buy a Starlink system and it would be like maybe in the next six months it would be ready and so it's good to see Starlink is actually coming on that is my best hope over there now, until Starlink comes online over there, what I might have to do is I might have to make a bunch. I mean, this would be the worst case. I could make a bunch of videos, put them on an SD card, Federal Express them to someone in the United States who could then upload them, and then I could kind of manage them from over there. You've got Internet over there. Okay, I've got internet over there, but it takes a huge bandwidth to upload, and I just I just don't think right now where I am there I would have the upload bandwidth that I would need to run this channel. But I think Starlink is coming on soon. I will find a solution, but it might not be the first week when I get there. And again, getting my uh, studio over there is going to be a little bit of a challenge. I've actually I'm actually building my studio right now. I mean, the building for my studio I'm building right now. If you guys want to see a picture of my studio as it presently exists. Does anybody want to see a picture of my studio, what it looks like now? It's in construction. Yes, okay, you guys want to see my studio. Okay, don't, don't laugh at it. Okay, don't laugh at it. It's under construction. I'm looking for it. Hold on, guys. I should have had this up already. Let's see. Let me try this. I'll have it in five seconds. 
Okay, here we here we go. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I can I can switch over there. I can switch over there. I think. Give me just a second now, and I will switch over there. Let's see if that got it. Okay, I'll get out of your way. All right, you see it's under construction, and it's back where those guys are. Beyond those doors will be a dedicated studio that I will have, and I will have one of the only studios with a grass roof. Uh-huh, grass, grass roof. So my studio is being built out of mud, sticks, and grass. Okay, do you think I can pull it off, or do you think I am a crazy man to try to make a studio out of mud, sticks and grass okay uh yes i am very excited i am very excited uh it's that those bricks are made from mud okay so those bricks that you see it's nearby they kind of dig a hole they mix water and then they kind of make the mud brick and then they pile all the bricks into this huge pile and the pile is sort of on top of wood, and then wood is on top of the pile, and then they light it like a big bonfire. And when they light, when they light it like a big bonfire, what it does is it then fires those bricks. And so even though those bricks, even though those bricks, even though those bricks are made out of mud, they kind of turn into a ceramic. So they really are a uh, they really are a very uh, a very sturdy structural material. But really, the studio is being built out of sticks, grass, and mud, and that's like ninety five percent of what it is. Hey, let's see, Biswaran John. I wish I could say it. He wanted me to say his name, Biz. Waron John, I'm sorry I can't pronounce it, Bahira. You just got your name said. Okay, there you go. So we will give you a shout out. Again, the comments are coming in pretty quickly, so I can't exactly follow them all. But at least you guys know now where we're going. I've got a year's worth of uh, <clears throat> material in the can, and then you're going to get one video a week. I'm going to, as long as I can, try to keep doing these live streams. Okay, I'm going to keep doing these live streams as long as I can. Might end up in Africa. Maybe we would just check in with each other with a webcam or something like that. And then as soon as I can, I'll bring my studio online over there. And then we'll start up in the production. Because without, you know, without doing, you know, like right now, I work full time plus a lot of other stuff that I do. I should, when I have get over there, have a lot more time to be uh, to be doing these educational series. Okay, let's see what other questions. Hey, uh, Fetch Fulan from North Africa. North Africa, where is that? Would that be like Egypt, Fetch? Are you in Egypt? Uh, if I may ask, maybe you don't want to be more specific than North Africa. Uh, let's see. Thanks. All right, JB, appreciate that trying to look at some of these. Uh, do I speak African? No, I don't speak African. And the language there is Swahili. Uh, how many languages do I know? I only know one. Okay, I only know one. Uh, let's see, I've got a lot of things I kind of have planned for Africa. One thing is I have this idea for this crazy reality show. And I would do the reality show and then just do it on YouTube. But it's such a crazy idea. It, it just, Africa is so different than anything else. Oh, Fetch Fulan from Mor Morocco. Okay, great. Thank you for, for letting us know that. Uh, so I kind of have this idea for this crazy reality show uh, that would be kind of like, I don't know if you've ever seen the, 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 the show Shark Tank, right? It would be kind of like Shark Tank. But instead of Shark Tank, it would be Minnow Bucket. <laughs> and it would be like these little indigenous farmers who would come in with their business idea and want, you know, $3 to pursue that. So it'd be, it'd be kind of like a venture capital type of thing, but these little micro things. And, and just the way things work in Africa, I think it be, could be extremely entertaining and it could be hilarious and it could be heartwarming at the same time. So that's kind of like a crazy idea that I have. Also would love to be a music producer, would like to go over there 
and like these indigenous people that live kind of like tribal indigenous people try to capture their music you know the music the cultural music of these tribal people so those are just kind of some crazy things that i'd like to do as well as keep making the old toptechboy.com videos okay uh let's see uh crazy man somebody's calling me a crazy man all right i will guilty i am crazy that's all right uh, let's see, would be fun and educational. Do you play any musical instruments? I have no musical talent at all, which makes it kind of like, how are you going to produce music if you, oh my goodness, we got some super chats coming in here. Thank you, sir. TM, uh, will you be doing 3D printing tutorials with SolidWorks? I will not do SolidWorks. If I did those, I probably need to remake, I probably need to remake those fusion 360 tutorials and let's see wayne is saying uh you ever consider doing a series on a robotic arm guys uh wayne i've done a robotic arm before like i have it was like a 500 hundred dollar robotic arm but it's really really hard it you can kind of play with them with joysticks but it's hard to program them because it's really complicated and you really don't know where they are and so something like reaching down and picking up a ping pong ball turns out to be a crazy crazy hard thing to do okay the difference between crazy and genius is success Philippe that's that's really interesting and one of the things I've always noticed because right I've worked with some of the smartest people on the faith, face of the earth and Philippe I would kind of add to what you said is there is a very fine line between crazy and genius and so like let's say between these two pins between these two pins is average okay so right here is average then when you go out this direction you're going smarter 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 and when you go out this direction you're going dumber 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 and so all of a sudden smart kind of starts turning into genius and dumb starts turning into crazy but the thing is it's not a straight line it curves around it curves around so the further you go out in smart you start curving around and the further you go out in dumb you start becoming crazy and then there is this point where crazy and genius meet and the real geniuses that I've known in life kind of you sit and wonder are they really cra are they genius or are they crazy it's sort of like insanity and and, and genius kind of go together. And I think that's reflected in a guy like Nikola Tesla, one of the smartest men that ever walked the face of the earth. And Philippe, to your point, that would be like success, like he was responsible for alternating current electricity. He, he was the enabler for our modern electrical infrastructure. Our world electric system really came from Tesla. And Tesla didn't sit down and design things and see things carefully. He would just have this insight where he would see the solution and then it would take time to understand how to even get there. And even there's stuff that he wrote that today people still are trying to figure out. Is this real stuff or is this just the ramblings of an insane man? And so he demonstrated both kind of uh, characteristics of genius and characteristics of insanity. So I find people out there on the fringe very interesting. So I'm like, I actually kind of like listening to kind of insane people because sometimes they just don't view the world like other people. So I find the fringe of the world very, uh, very interesting. Okay, let's see, Fetch says, teacher, do we have to achieve the Arduino series before? No, if you're in the middle of the Arduino series and you have the bandwidth, go ahead and start the Python series. It's not like Python starts where Arduino ends. It's like if you've taken the first four or five Arduino lessons, you would be ready, you would be ready to go ahead and take those, uh, go ahead and take those Python. So I am really, really excited about the Python stuff. If I get to Africa, I would like to go back and kind of go through those uh, those Jetson Nano and Jetson Xavier. I'd really like to go back 
and have a go again at the machine learning and the artificial intelligence. I understand that my present Jetson Nano series, there's a couple of things like I'm on an older jet pack. There's some couple of things that have kind of not working perfectly as the software had advanced. So I would like to do that. Okay, Visionary Robotics is asking for more math challenges. I really need to do that. Thank you for that reminder, Visionary Robotics. I might do like a math problem for you next week. Okay, I might do a math problem for you next week. Inferno, I'm going through a burnout from engineering. Inferno, you're not drinking enough coffee, man. Don't burn out. If you're in school and you're feeling burned out, that kind of makes sense. But guys, don't lose your love for engineering. Don't get so overwhelmed you lo lose your love for engineering. Find a few things to distract yourself, like, you know, go work out or go fishing or go hiking. I mean, get away from it. Uh, a little bit every day so you can keep your mind clear. That would be my best uh, advice. Johan says he bought the Jetson Nano just following your advice. Johan, I hope you enjoy that. Uh, you know, there is so much stuff out there on the Raspberry 3 or 4. I don't have a lot of energy for doing that. I am thinking about the Raspberry Pi Pico. That one has my interest. It's a little $5 bar. Oh my goodness, Ron. Thank you so much. Another super chat. You guys are really generous. Hello, loves from Italy. From Italy, okay, the home of the Arduino. Are you planning to make some PCLs or ROS programming? You know, the whole ROS thing, I bought a like $2,000 clear robotics ROS system, and that thing broke my heart. I could never get it to do what I wanted it to do. I wanted it to map the school, and then I wanted to have a little thing like for my engineering students where anybody in the school could send a dollar by PayPal, and then the robot would make the cup of coffee and then drive it down to them. And I had everything working, but I couldn't get the darn Ross system to effectively make and save a map of the school. So it was sort of like we spent several years on that, but the Ross thing sort of broke my heart. It really did sort of break my heart. Uh, and so probably Ross is not going to be the next thing that I am going to do. What is uh, the advantage of Python over Arduino? Well, it's just Arduino has very limited. The nice thing about Arduino is it works with hardware really easily. You can hook sensors or GPS or anything up to it. It works with sensors and actuators very easily, but then it has limited memory, limited processing horsepower, can't do video, can't do so many things, which Python is really good at. Like it's hard to work with strings in Arduino. Strings are very easy in Python, databases, lists, uh, Ethernet, all that stuff is easy in Python. So you let Arduino be Arduino, and then you let Python do the heavy lifting, if that makes sense. Okay, let's see. Uh, all right, well, you guys, I catch as many uh, yeah, uh, Python is slow because it's not a compiled language, but the things that we're doing are not things that are like trying to calculate the hundredth decimal of pi or something like that. The things we're doing are not computationally intense. Plus, I think it is pretty, uh, pretty easy. Can I give you an Arduino project idea? Yeah, go build an Arduino GPS. Make a hot cold game where you put in the coordinates of a prize and then you make a little Arduino with a GPS and an LCD, and the only thing the LCD says is warmer or colder. And so if a person is getting closer to the prize, you tell him warmer. If he's getting further from the prize, you say colder. And then when he gets to the prize, you say bingo, and then maybe the prize was hidden under like a park bench or something like that. But you could make the warmer, colder game. How'd you like that off the top of the head? Someone asked me for a project idea in Arduino and I came up with one. I think that would be a pretty cool, pretty cool little game. Okay, I'm gonna try to take a few more questions here. Okay, fetch, yeah, that uh, that I think, I think it would be a good idea. Okay, uh, th let's see. Uh, teacher next year like to major in computer science. Which advice would you have for me? Fetch, I'm going to advise you to become an electrical engineer instead of a computer science. Electrical engineering opens up the world of hardware, and it's just, man, if you're an electrical engineer, 
there is always a place for you. If you want to work on jet fighter aircraft, they need electrical engineers. If you want to work at SpaceX, they need electrical engineers. If you want to work on the power grid, if you want to work on the iPhone, no matter, no matter what job you want, they need electrical engineers. To where a lot of times I think computer science you don't get to work sometimes on exciting things. You're working on a tiny part of a tiny part of a tiny part. And it's just, it's not to me as wonderful as the world of electrical engineering. If you like to program, be an electrical engineer with a specialty in programming or science or something, uh, something like that. When am I going to Africa? As soon as my little barn apartment is done. So I'm building a little, I'm building a little home base here inside of a barn and I've got to get that finished before I leave. Teach us to use the oscillator later from Arduino board. Okay, duly noted. Uh, is the programming of Arduino the same as Python? No, Python is a different language, but if you've done Arduino, you will recognize things. How many hours did you spend studying per day in college? Okay, that's a great question. If you're going to be successful in engineering in college, you better plan on spending, uh, you know, 16 hours a day and all day Saturday and Sunday afternoon that if you're going to make it in college engineering, it is a full-time job. Now, you need to maintain good mental health. So like on Friday, go out with your friends and have some iced tea, iced tea and chips, no intoxicants, no things that you puff on, none of that stuff. Okay, none of that stuff in the arm, right? But go out and try to relax on Friday night with some friends having some chips and iced tea or, you know, try to have half an hour to work out in the evening. You got to kind of clear your mind. But man, if you're going to make it in engineering in college, you better plan on doing nothing but engineering when you're there, if that, uh, if that makes sense. All right. Okay, let's see. What else have we got? Uh, good advice for mechanical engineering students, man. Just like any engineering, put the time in, master the math, uh, you know, uh, sacrifice in college, all right, because it's, it's very hard. Any engineering, uh, any engineering discipline is very, very hard. I am a Texas master electrician. I would like to learn electrical engineering. I'm a high school dropout. Uh, what you got to do is... Uh, Ian, what I would do is, number one, I would take all the lessons that I have on this channel, become adept at programming, and then go over to the Khan Academy and start in Algebra 1 and go from Algebra 1 all the way to Calculus. And if you do my lessons and you do the math lessons in Khan Academy, you're going to de facto start really developing some engineering school, uh, some engineering skill. Uh, Visionary Robotics. Uh, Visionary Robotics is homeschooled and he is starting college at 16. Uh, you're on the right track, Visionary Robotics. Uh, we homeschool our daughter. She started college about 15 or 16. She graduated college at the top of her class. And so people poo-poo homeschooling, but it's really one of the best ways to educate our young people. Okay, so let's see. We've got some nice discussion going on there. All right, guys. I'm going to wrap this. I'm going to wrap this up. Really appreciate you tuning in. I have had a great time with you today. I have really enjoyed this time together, and I think I am going to try to kind of wrap this thing up. Hope you guys will tune in next week. I have a lot of fun with these live streams. I really do. I really look forward to them every week, and I do try to stop them after an hour because. I want to leave you kind of wanting more. I don't want you to get tired or bored with these things. And we'll come back next week. Maybe maybe I'll try to come up with a math challenge for next week. But enjoy getting together with you guys. And you guys with the Super Chats, really appreciate it. And I do, man, I do have expenses with this uh, studio and stuff and, and all of this. And so when you guys help me out like that, it really is much appreciated. Okay, guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. I'll talk to you guys later. Later. <laughs>